Welcome, electronic video guests, to the outer limits of the trading card hobby, TTM. Through the mail, we seek to have the famous and the infamous sign the trading cards and photographs we send to them through the mail. Today we have 10 such specimens to examine. 10 trading card autograph request returns? That's right. So if you like seeing envelopes being cut open, you've come to the right place. Sit back, relax, and get ready to enjoy the fun. Presented to you, absolutely, 100% advertisement free from the worldwide YouTube video air fill. Boy, oh boy, we are going to have us a day with some TTMs. And then after we examine these specimens, we'll tell you how you can enter to win this 2020 Jason Dominguez first Bowman card. Beautiful. And how you can enter to win this 2021 Score rookie card of Justin Fields. Look at that. It's got the official rookie card logo there. And he's in his Georgia uniform. Look at that. That is beautiful. Look at that Justin Fields rookie card. Didn't he have a spectacular game last night? I bet you didn't know that Justin has a French bulldog named Uno. <laughs> I did not know that he, he named his pet bulldog after his own number. Very nice, Justin. Well, he had a great game last night. He's overcome a lot in his life to become the player that he is. You remember, we picked this one out with his Georgia uniform because... He endured such an awful time there at Georgia. How he managed to get through that year at Georgia. Such a painful time for him. Remember, he was a he and his family were victims of hate crimes there. And somehow he managed to get through it all. And Ohio State took him in and gave him a chance to rebuild his life. He became a great prospect. Justin Fields. Yeah, he made Bill Belichick's defense look pretty silly last night. Very nice game for Justin Fields. The Bears, they routed the Patriots. But to celebrate, we're going to give away a survivor. Justin Fields, the survivor of Georgia, give away his rookie card. Just keep watching. We'll tell you how you can win this thing. <laughs> Justin Fields. He survived all that trauma. He endured at Georgia. He came out of it and became a great football hero. All right. Now let's get us some TTMs. TTMs. Let's see what we got for our first TTM. This one is coming to us all the way from Santa Barbara, California. What do we got from Santa Barbara? Let's see. Oh, look at that. That is a sweet card. Look at that. Signature looks so good on that 1985 Topps rookie card. Brett Saberhagen, that is a sweet looking card. Look at that, that is a great way to start. 58 years old, great old pitcher for the Kansas City Royals. Great fastball, great control. Three-time All-Star, two-time Cy Young Award winner. MVP of the 1985 World Series. 
He won three. He won games three and seven. Only allowed one run in 18 innings. His best year was 1989 when he was 23 and seven, with a 2.16 ERA. Threw a no hitter in 1991. He also appeared on an episode of the old TV show Married with Children. Brett Saberhagen, look at that. That is a sweet looking card. Thank you, sir, for signing your 1985 Topps rookie card. Really appreciate that. Look at that. That is a nice looking card, isn't it? Beautiful. Brett Saberhagen, we really like that. All right, good way to start. Going on to TTM number two. Coming from South Jersey. TTM2 from South Jersey. What do we got from South Jersey? Oh, nice. Another rookie card signed. Don Money signing his 1969 rookie card. That's another nice looking card, isn't it? 75 years old, old Don Money. He was one of the better third basemen of the 1970s. Played 16 seasons for the Phillies and the Brewers. Had a lifetime batting average of 261. Cranked out 176 home runs. <clears throat> His best year was 1977 with Milwaukee. Hit 279 with 25 home runs and 83 RBIs. Four time All Star. And despite being considered as a very good fielder, he never won a gold glove. Kind of surprising. They always said he's one of the best fielders, but he never got a gold glove. His grandson, Buddy Kennedy, plays uh, right now with the Diamondbacks. Don Money, 75 years old. He signs his 1969 Topps rookie card. Very nice. Really appreciate that. Another nice looking card. Two good rookie cards to start us off. Let's see if we can keep it up. Our next one is coming to us from Issaquah, Washington. I got a feeling this one is from the old center, Swen Nader. You remember that guy? Let's see if he went ahead and signed that card for us. Swen Nader. It would be a, a three for three on rookie cards if he signed it. The old giant center, Swen Nader. Let's see. We got. Looks like we got our note back. Let's see if we got the card signed. Swen Nader. He did not let us down. Look at that beautiful card. It's kind of hard to see a signature there on it, but he signed it all right. Beautiful Swen Nader. He signed his. 1975 Topps rookie card. Look at that. That is a beauty. This old Swen is 72 years old now. Let me tell you, this fella has had quite a life, quite a time in life. He had to overcome a little adversity himself, just like Justin Fields, enduring all that hate down there in Georgia. Old Swen was born in the Netherlands. Abandoned by his mother at age three, he lived in an orphanage until coming to the U.S. at age nine. He played basketball at a junior college and then went on to UCLA. He was Bill Walton's backup for two years. He never started a game at UCLA. Despite that, he was still a first-round draft choice by the Milwaukee Bucks in 1973, but he decided to play in the ABA. ABA Rookie of the Year in 1974 with the San Antonio Spurs, an ABA All-Star 1974 and 1975. He went to the NBA with the Bucks in 1977. Led the NBA in rebounding in 1980. 
the only player in basketball history to lead the ABA and NBA in rebounding. He averaged 13 points a game for his career and 13 rebounds a game in the NBA. In the NBA, he had career averages of 12 points and 11 rebounds per game. Thank you, Mr. Swen Nader. 72 years old, you signed your 1975 Topps rookie card. Really appreciate that old Swen. He had a rough beginning in his life. He persevered and went on to have a great career in basketball in the United States. Look at that. You got this. Swen was born in the Netherlands. Got the little store carrying him. His mom didn't want him. But despite that, he persevered. Great story, Swen Nader. Let me see if he answered any uh, questions on the note. Uh, let me see. Did you like playing in the ABA or NBA better? NBA, the top. Did you enjoy playing for Coach Wooden at UCLA? He said, of course. Look at that. He said, ain't no doubt about it. Who wouldn't want to play for Coach Wooden? Did you have any favorite teammates from your days, either in the ABA or NBA? Looks like a George Gervin, Kennedy, oh, Silas, Paul Silas, must be uh, Lonnie Freeman, World Be Free, Dr. J, what does that say, Walton, and the whole, and the whole team, I guess. Very nice. Swen Nader, thank you, sir. He said, of course I like playing for John Wooden. All right, that's a great story, the Swen Nader story. Really appreciate him signing that rookie card. Well, these are some great returns, aren't they? Three for three on rookie cards. Let's see what we got next. This one's coming to us from West Palm Beach, Florida. That's a swanky town, isn't it, West Palm Beach? That's for rich people. They got a lot of pretty girls strolling around in bikinis down there, I think. Is is that right? If I'm wrong, let me know down in the comments field. Oh, look at that card. Beautiful. 1992 Donners. That looks sweet. And look at that signature and penmanship from the Hall of Famer Larry Walker. He took his time on that car, didn't he? 55 years old, signed this 92 Donruss card. One of the great hitters of the 1990s, Larry Walker. Played 17 years, first six with Montreal, then 10 with Colorado, where he had his greatest years of some fantastic seasons. In 1997, 1998, and 1999, he had batting averages of 366, 363, and 379. In 97, he had 49 home runs, 130 RBIs, and won the MVP. Lifetime 313 batting average. 383 home runs, five-time All-Star, seven-time Gold Glover. He was a great right fielder. Three Silver Sluggers. The greatest Canadian-born baseball player of all time. Yep, he's the, he's the greatest. He's better than Fergie Jenkins. Come on. Larry Walker. And look at that. Like I said, look at his penmanship. Look how neatly... And artily, he wrote out the best wishes. And look at that signature, his Hall of Fame. He didn't just scribble on there. He took his time. What a classy old guy. He took his time. Didn't just rush through it. Did a nice job. Thank you, Larry Walker. I appreciate that. You took a little time, a little effort to do that. We appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Walker, a Hall of Famer. Beautiful. These are four great returns. 
Let's see if we can make it five for five. Somebody out in San Diego, California said, yes, I'll send something back to you. Let's see if it's signed. It's from San Diego. San Diego, California. Let's see what we got. Oh, my custom art card. Oh, this is a, this is going to be one of my all-time favorites. Steve Fisher. Oh, this is sweet. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Fisher. 77 years old. The greatest coach in any sport I've ever seen at the University of Michigan. Better than Bo Schembechler, Lloyd Carr, Jim Harbaugh, John Beeline. Nobody, nobody on the college level ever coached better defense than Steve Fisher. Won the NCAA, NCAA championship in 1989. He had two other Final Fours, two other national title game appearances. Of course, he left Michigan under the Fab Five cloud. He had to start all over again at San Diego State, and he built the Aztecs into one of the best mid-major powers. Fantastic coach. Steve Fisher, never, never given his proper due, was one of the great coaches. But let me tell you, if you ever saw his teams play, you knew this guy could coach basketball. Steve Fisher. Yes, sir, Ree. We really appreciate you signing this custom art card. Look at that. He won the whole thing. Steve Fisher. That is a beauty. I really appreciate that. Best coach I ever saw at Michigan. Don't tell me about Schembechler or Carr or any of these people. All right, that's, to me, five great returns. I think most of you people don't even know who Steve Fisher is, but I'll tell you what, he could coach some basketball. All right, what do we got next? Coming out of New York City. Well, that is a famous town, a very important place in the whole globe. I remember how they all get so shook up on 9-11 New York City. Oh, that is a, that's an important place. Let's see what we got out of there. Oh, that is a sweet card. Gerard Gallant. Look at that. Man, this is six straight great returns. 59 years old. He signed this 1991 Pro Set card. Beautiful. Tough, tough old left winger for the Red Wings in the late 80s. Good goal scorer, tough guy. Best years were from 1987 to 1990. Scored 145 goals in those four seasons. A back injury in 1991 really hampered his play, eventually forced him to retire at the age of 30. Became a very successful coach after his playing days. Incredibly, he led the expansion Las Vegas Golden Knights to the Stanley Cup Finals in their first season of existence. Took an expansion team to the finals. Amazing accomplishment. Of course, he was the Jack Adams Coach of the Year for that. Currently coaching the New York Rangers. Gerard Gallant, thank you, sir. Old, great Detroit Red Wing, great hockey coach, too. Thank you, sir. Really appreciate you signing this Pro Set card. Gerard Gallant, look at that. That is a beauty. That's six in a row. Haven't had any duds, no scrub players. Let's see what we get. Number seven feels a little thick. Getting a little nervous. Are we going to get a price list? Well, let's see what we got in there. What? What is this? Oh, seven for seven. Jim Kern signing his 1975 Topps Mini Rookie Card. Look at that. Jim Kern, one of the great relief pitchers. Look at that. Beautiful. Got him to sign his rookie card. We're, we're rolling today. 73 years old, tremendous fastball, 
Pitched 13 seasons, a three-time All-Star. Now, one of those fancy uh, baseball analytics sites has determined that Jim Kern had the greatest four-year stretch of any relief pitcher in baseball history from 1976 through 1979, with that 1979 season being his career best. 71 games, 29 saves, 1.57 ERA, 143 innings pitched in relief. Can you believe that? In three of Jacob deGrom's nine years as a starter, he hasn't pitched that many innings. Well, in 1980, he tried to pitch through an elbow injury. He ended up hurting his neck, and his career was never the same. But he was one of the premier, premier relief pitchers in the late 70s. Tremendous fastball. Jim Kern, thank you, sir, for signing this 1975 Topps Mini Rookie card. Let's see, what do, what is this thing he sent along? Looks like some kind of a advertisement. Mr. wrote a book. Uh, Join three-time All-Star Relief Pitcher of the Year, Jim Emu Kern and his teammates as they detail their lives in the major leagues. Funny and interesting on and off the field stories about Hall of Famers Ted Williams, Fergie Jenkins, Nolan Ryland, Gaylord Perry, Pudge Rodriguez, and many more. Look at that. I had a hell of a good time during my life in the game. I'd love to share these stories with you. Now look at that. Oh, look at here. Jim will send you an autographed copy of the book for twenty-seven fifty. That is simply the price of the paperback book and shipping. Hey, you can call Jim here. Look at this. He's got his email. Or give him a call. Talk some baseball. I'm sure he'd like you to call right now. Call 817-946-2479 and talk to Jim Kern. <laughs> Tell him Hank Rassico sent you. He said, call him up right now and talk some baseball or ask him how the weather is down there. Jim Kern, thank you, sir. Really appreciate that. You signed that mini rookie card. That is beautiful. Man, we got some great returns today. All right, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Where's this one coming from? Tampa, Tampa, Florida. Hopefully they got the cleanup done down there. Tampa, Florida. Oh, that's another nice return. Randy Whitman, look at that. Now that stadium club card came out nice. 62 years old, he signed this 1992-93 top stadium club card. He played on the 1981 NCAA champion Indiana Hoosiers alongside Isaiah Thomas, first-round draft pick by the Bullets in 1983, traded to Atlanta, played 10 years in the NBA, had some modest success. Best year was 1986. He averaged 13 points a game. After his playing days, was the head coach with even less success. Missing the playoffs seven out of nine seasons with Cleveland, Minnesota, and Washington. Randy Whitman, Indiana basketball legend. Member of the 1981 Bobby Knight champion Indiana Hoosiers. That is a nice looking card though. Randy Whitman, thank you sir, really appreciate that. Alright, we only got two left. What do we got next? This one is coming to us from Wilmington, Delaware. <clears throat> from Wilmington, Delaware. Is this our Jill Biden? Dr. Jill Biden autograph? <laughs> Let's see. No, we got a Larry Christensen. Very, that looks nice. Look, that's a nice signature from old Larry, 68 years old, on his 1974 Topps card. <clears throat> Larry was the third overall pick of the 1972 draft. 
pretty decent right-hand pitcher for some poor Phillies teams in his early years. Pitched 11 years, won 83, lost 71, had a 3.79 ERA. Six career shutouts. Three times as many as Jacob deGrom has. Imagine that. He has three times as many career shutouts as Jacob deGrom. He's way better than DeGrom, huh? His best year was 1977 when he went 19-6. and six. By the end, of the end of his career, the Phillies had turned into a pretty good ball club, and he was a member of the 1980 World Series champion Phillies. He was also one of the better hitting pitchers of his day. He clubbed 11 home runs in his 427 career at-bats. Not bad. He had a little bit of power. Power hitting pitcher Larry Christensen. Look at that sweet old top scar. We really like that. Look at this here. Larry works for a lumber company in the off-season. Look at that. Chopping some wood or getting some wood out on the plane saw. Larry Christensen. Working in the lumber company. Thank you, sir. Really appreciate you signing that card. All right, we're down to our last one. This one is coming to us from Metroplex, Michigan. That's our own neighborhood. Probably could have walked over and got this one myself. Let's see who it's from. Probably a Detroit or Michigan player. Let's see. Oh, yes. <laughs> Yes, sir. Look at that. That is a beauty. Larry Sippa. I bet nobody watching has heard of this guy. Maybe one person. Larry Sippa. i tell you what. Old Larry Sippa was Dennis Franklin's backup quarterback for three years at Michigan on those early 1970s Bo Schembechler teams. He only started... One game in college, only threw 71 career passes. He completed only 33%. But for some reason, the Saints drafted him anyway. <laughs> the Saints drafted him. And after a string of injuries hit their quarterbacks, he ended up starting three games for the Saints. He only started one game for Michigan, started three games for the Saints. And quite honestly, one of the worst quarterbacks in NFL history. Career completion percentage of 37%. With one DD and three interceptions. And I'll tell you, to get an idea of what Big Ten football was like in the 1970s, as a mop-up quarterback for Michigan in 1971, <laughs> he threw two touchdown passes and still ended up ninth in the league <laughs> for throwing DD passes with two. Larry Zippa, 71 years old. He signed this 1975 Tops rookie card. Surely one of the most obscure college and football quarterbacks of all time. I wonder how many people ever heard of this guy outside of southeast Michigan. I bet even down there in New Orleans they don't remember Larry Sippa. But I am glad to get this old card back from the Michigan Wolverine, Larry Sippa. Thank you, sir. Really appreciate that. Well, that was some day of TTMs, wasn't it? Woo! We had some great returns. Now we got to give away some cards. Look at the Survivor. Justin Fields, all the emotional scars, the psychological damage he endured at Georgia. He overcame it, became a star quarterback at the Ohio State and the Chicago Bears. Had a tremendous victory last night over Bill Belichick. If you'd like to win this sweet Justin Fields rookie card, you wonder how in the heck am I going to win such a thing? All you got to do is go down into the comments field, put in hashtag JGA, hashtag JGA. Get that done by 10 a.m. on Halloween and you're entered. 
If only one person entered, you'll win the survivor's card. If more than one does, we'll do a random drawing. And on that day, on that random drawing, we're also going to be giving away the Jason Dominguez Bowman first. How do you win that, you ask? Just go back to our last video, watch that. It's got Dominguez in the title. That'll tell you how you can enter. You got until 10 a.m. for that one, too. On Halloween Day, we'll give away these two cards. If you want the fields, put that in the comments field. Hashtag JGA. 10 a.m. Halloween. All right, people. That was a big, big day of TTMs. We're going to hit the stop button on this thing. That's right. We are ready to dump another TTM video into the worldwide YouTube video air fill. God willing, we'll be back probably Friday night. We'll try to do a football picks video. <laughs> we had another big week of football picks. That's three in a row. We'll try to do that Friday night. Maybe give some cards away too if we're still alive. All right, until then, <laughs> remember, enjoy the rest of your life.